Welcome to another edition of Pauline Interviews. Here today with me is Aaron McCullough, and Aaron is an infinite possibilities trainer. Sounds interesting to me. We're going to find out all about it. So, Aaron, welcome. I'm so happy to spend this time with you and doing an interview, and appreciate you coming here. New Renaissance Bookstore, by the way. I got to tell the folks that I'm again, once again at New Renaissance Bookstore, and I want to thank them so much for letting me use their event center. I really appreciate it. When you get a chance, come to Northwest 23rd and just check out all the wonderful things they have here at the Northwest, at the North at the new renaissance see i screw up all the time new renaissance bookstore here on northwest 23rd but i don't care i'm going to carry on because i'm excited to interview erin so erin you're an infinite possibilities trainer now what does an infinite possibilities that's a mouthful trainer do <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me oh, um you're welcome so i trained under a gentleman named mike dooley he was in the secret the uh, book movie um that was a, a bit of a hit um, and he is, what he teaches is, and what I teach now, is um, Law of Attraction, and um, he does it under the Infinite Possibilities um, guise, and what we talk about is his main tenant, which is thoughts become things. The things you think about the most mm -hmm. is what you create in your life. And the other tenant that we talk about is um, how to take personal responsibility for all that you've created in your life thus far from, an, from the standpoint of um, if you created these things, then you can uncreate the things that you don't like. Um, so it's not a blame game. It's really just about when you have awareness around the things that you don't like and you have tools to use to change them, then you can create what it is that you want in your life. Thank you for that segue, because what I wanted to ask you is, you took responsibility a number of years ago because you had some health issues. Is that what led you into this? And can you explain? Sure. Um, actually, I had several series of health issues um, that led me to the understanding that the mind and the body are connected, um, which I think most people know now. But back in the 80s and 90s, this was not. This was kind of new information. Now I think people recognize that things like stress can create you know, heart attacks and um, some ill health. Um, back then, I was unclear um, about what was going on. I was having the sensation I was having, and actually it's come full circle, because the sensation I was having was, it happened when I was here in, in Portland, Oregon. And uh, it, it was that disconnected feeling that maybe you feel when you are having a cold and your um, sinuses are really stuffed up where you feel kind of like you're having an out-of-body experience. Um, I was having that all the time. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They did a ton of tests, you know, um, on the Western side, Western medicine. Um, you know, anything from heart to, uh, they thought maybe I was having temporal lobe seizures. And I was put on some medication. Were you and having stress? Was there something happening in your life at this time? Um, I mean, I think life, when you don't have um, tools to sort of combat stress and things can just be stressful. Um, there wasn't anything particular coming up at the time. I, it was just sort of, um, it was really just a... Um, a manifestation in my body of a reaction to an environmental thing. And so after, uh, long story short, after uh, going and getting all these tests done and starting on some regular pharmaceutical medication, I um, decided that I was no longer willing to do that. And did you I, have side effects from it? I did. I Well, I don't know if you've ever had that sensation where you've taken a pill and you can literally feel it going through your body as as it's going in. I don't take any um, medication, so. <laughs> I, I don't either anymore because of mm -hmm. these. Um, but that was the sensation. And it did not feel good, needless to say. And so I m decided at that moment that I was no longer going to do that. And I was going to find any way I could uh, to find healing. And as it turns out, I ended up at the New Renaissance bookstore uh, looking for anything on self-healing. And they steered me in the direction of this gentleman whose name totally escapes me, uh, who wrote a book. And I read the book, and it was on self-healing. And when I got to the end of the book, on the back, it said the author was from Portland, Oregon. So I called the bookstore, and I was like, you know, you recommended this book. It says that the author's here. Do you, does he do practice here? And they said, as a matter of fact, he practices above the bookstore. And I was like, oh. oh, my gosh. So I called him up. I gave him a message and told him what was happening for me. 
and he um, called me back almost immediately and he said, we set up an appointment, he said, I think I already know what's going on for you, but I want you to come in and let's talk about it. And I came in and he said, I think you have some food allergies. And I did test positive for a bunch of food allergies, which uh, to him was more of a, there's something going on with your immune system if you're testing positive for all of these foods. Mm -hmm. So I cleaned up my diet and avoided a lot of the allergens. And um, a few months later, we moved out of the house that we were in, moved into another place, and all of my symptoms went away. Isn't that amazing? You've got to find the right doctor. You can't just take a bunch of pills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, when I called the landlord um, after we had left to get our deposit back, I said, were you able to rent the house? And she said, no, we had to do some repairs. We found mildew in the attic. Oh. So I was clearly having a response to the mildew in the attic. But what it made me realize in the meantime was I was starting to begin to learn some tools on how to create health, um, not only through nutrition, but also through visualization and meditation and um, just the idea of being able to heal yourself was a new concept to me. And um, so that piece came to me several times actually in my life through different health issues. I also had, um, for all intents and purposes, for not having another uh, better name for it, um, uh, a full like mental breakdown when I was living in San Francisco. Um, was this before the allergy attacks or after? This was after. Um, I had uh, an ex-boyfriend of mine and I went to some psychological counseling together to figure out what was going on for us. And um, I had a panic attack in the first session. And the counselor came to me and she said, I, you know, something's obviously coming up for you. Would you like to do some one-on-one -on -one work? And I said, sure, sure, I'd be willing to do that. And as we went along and got deeper and deeper into my past, um, I began to create anxiety disorder. And through that anxiety disorder, it made my life very narrow. I was not able to leave my house. Um, I had created all these rituals in order to leave the house just to go to the very like absolutely needed things like the grocery store or to my counseling sessions. And um, that went on for about a year, um, just being completely debilitated. And finally my counselor came to me and she said, listen, we're not able to do any more work. Uh, what we're really dealing with now is symptoms. and." I cannot help you with those symptoms of anxiety. I, I want to recommend you to a homeopathic psychiatrist. And um, so I went to the homeopathic psychiatrist. It was a three hour interview and she gave me a remedy, told me to wait 20 minutes and then told me to leave. And I took the remedy and within 20 minutes my anxiety was almost completely cleared. Was it an essential oil? Um, no, it was sepia. It was a homeopathic remedy. Oh. Amazing. Yeah. Do you know what created that anxiety not to be able to leave the home? Was it something in your childhood? Did they ever get to that? The uh, You got the symptoms. You got a cure. But did you ever want to go deeper and find out what perpetrated it? So now I understand why that happened. And part of the reason that that happens is, and it's one of the things that I talk about in my coaching and in the classes that I teach, the subconscious level you're not able to de decipher whether something is happening at the moment or it already happened and you're recreating it by talking about it. One of the first things that I ask my clients to tell me is, you know, tell me your story. Tell me your story from start to finish, all this stuff. And of course, they talk about all the traumas and the things that have happened. And the reason that I do that is because I don't allow them to tell that story again because that story is not who you are. The problem with the subconscious mind is when you tell that story again, you are literally reliving it in your body. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it can create disease because when you continue to keep attaching events to it, so anytime you have a low level event, which is anything that doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. you're attaching all these other things, and then this happened, and then oh, back in my childhood this happened, and then all these other things happened, right? Mm -hmm. So it's shifting the energy from the past, which served you on some level, but does not serve the future. So first we talk about the story and how we don't get to tell the story anymore and how we retrain the brain to not keep going back to that story. And then we get clarity about what the future looks like. 
I want to talk about that. I'm going to save this for part two. We're going to tell okay. somebody comes in and what you're going to do. But let's go back to the secret because you said um, your subconscious also it works for your good when you do visualization. Absolutely. Right? So let's yeah. talk about some of the tenets of the thoughts become things. I love that. <clears throat> so let's, and you like Mike Dooley. You took, let's say, uh, t talk a little about Mike Dooley and the classes you took with him. Yeah, Mike training. is phenomenal. Um, actually, how that happened is um, we had talked about before. I'd been involved with another seminar company for about 10 years and taken all their seminars, staffed their seminars, chief of staff. Um, and he was a guest speaker, and that's how I met him. And it was maybe six or seven years ago. And I got his notes from the universe, which are free. Everybody should get those at tut.com. Um, and they come in your email box uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and they are literally what I said, notes from the universe. And they're quirky and funny and um, <laughs> always fitting, uh -huh. of course, <laughs> as the universe works. <laughs> yeah. um, it sure helps you out going to doctor to doctor. You found the right path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes it did. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kept getting his notes from the universe for years, and then I saw that he was, I used to live in Hawaii on the big island in Kona, and he was coming to Oahu about two years ago. And I thought, you know, I could use a refresher course on just about anything at this mm -hmm. point in my life. <laughs> and um, I flew over, and um, as it turned out, the seminar was about um, the visualization and how to do his form of visualization, which uh, I would like to talk about uh, next. Mm -hmm. um, and I was so excited by it that I went home and my business that I'd had for 18 years had been for sale for six months. And there had been very little action. And my broker was talking to me about uh, lowering the price. I called him up and I said, listen, Mark. <laughs> Raise the price. <laughs> yeah, no, I said, uh, listen, there's going to be a bidding war over my business. And it's going to sell by the end of the month. I just want to let you know. And he was like, well, you know, we'd <laughs> all like to think. And I said, oh, no, it's happening. I love it. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, uh, it actually ended up going into three separate bidding wars. It did sell, and um, I was able to manage my emotions through the entire thing because of what I had been taught by Mike while he was freaking out the whole time. <laughs> so so it, you did it by visualizing it, didn't you? I did. I did so, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. the visualization mm -hmm. process that um, I teach in the workshops and that I learned from Mike. Yeah. Um, is really about, and this is all law of attraction stuff too, you know, the, the tenant is thoughts become things. And so what that means is when you create the right thoughts, then you create the future. And so through the visualization process, there are several things that um, we teach that, that are very important. One is obviously... And we'll talk about that when we talk about how you teach it. Mm -hmm. But I want to say um, thoughts become things. I love that. But when they do that, you not only visualize, but don't you have to have the emotion? I remember Michael Beckwith in The Secret. He, mm -hmm. he was one of my favorites as well as Mike Dooley. He said the universe is a feeling universe, so you can't just visualize. You've got to put your feelings behind it and actually like you're really there. Like athletes do when they visualize and their, their muscles do things mm -hmm. and their body changes. Is that, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That is probably the most important. Um, there's a couple of, couple of things I would say. Most importantly is feeling, like being passionate about what it is that you're wanting to create and like goosebumps. Like uh -huh. when I have my visualization, sometimes I'm crying, but tears of joy, you know, it's like I'm so there and it's so a part of what I'm manifesting that it's already happening. And this is one of the things that I teach because this is where I understood joy for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and you say I, created a place of intention, but we'll, we're going to talk about that when we talk about your teaching. I just want to ask you one other quick question. Yeah. You, you did the bidding war, you got rid of your soldier business, which is mm -hmm. fabulous, but I think I read you also met the love of your life. I did, yeah. Tell um, us about that. Well, I mean, I don't believe in luck or, um, you know, people say, oh, I was lucky because I was just at the right place at the right time. I think that that sort of thing is happening all the time. It's just that our awareness sometimes isn't there. And so uh, I met, uh, so I was going, had gone through a divorce, and that's, that was one of the things that prompted me to go to Mike's seminar about visualization. 
And uh, when I came back, I thought, you know, all these years I've had these relationships and they're, in essence, we tend to have the same relationship over and over again with people until we get resolution on some of the things that about ourselves that Is we're... Is that because putting out the same old energy, we're not changing our energy, so we're attracting whatever energy we're putting out, we're attracting back to us? Part of it is that, yeah. I mean, law of attraction says like attracts like, right? And so just like with my clients, when they say, oh, I want to meet the love of my life, I say, okay, have you made the list of who they are? And they mm -hmm. say, yes. And I say, okay, have you made the list of who you're going to be? I'm going to pretend to be a client. We're going to come back and do that. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, so when people can see how you work, it'd be great. Yeah. It's really fascinating. I've always loved the secret and the way every saying thoughts become things. It, it just makes sense to me. Thanks, Erin. And we're going to do another interview with you because there's so much to talk about. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Pauline Interviews. Watch for part two. Thank you.